So now we want to see how many degrees is rolling off uh, from your head during the test. If we pull here, this is a weight of uh, 10 kilo and it falls half a meter. Okay, that's it. Very easy. What weight is the head? The head is uh, the size of the head is always depending on the size of the helmet. Mm -hmm. So there's again uh, five different sizes. We've got a helmet now size 58, 59. So it's the fit mm -hmm. inside that yeah, size. And really yes, cool. and the uh, weight is also different. So mm -hmm. this is the medium size head. This is about four and a half kilo. But if you have a very big head mm -hmm. and a very big chest that is uh, 6.1 kilo and the smaller one is about three, uh, three kilos. So it's always also depending. Um, yeah, the stress is also different. If you have a heavy head inside a, a big helmet, it's quite different than a medium one. So we're fixing, we're fixing the helmet bit. It's just these uh, straps just to make sure um, the helmet stays in the right place because it's a free fall, but still um, we want to test the helmet on the, on the point where the helmet Conditioning, so all the information if it's uh, production or if it's just uh, testing for new material. And uh, afterwards, we're getting a curve showing us the maximum acceleration and also the HIC. The HIC is the head injury criterion showing you the uh, value or the area below the curve. Because um, we could either have a very um, high curve, what is very narrow, or a flat curve, what is very wide. And um, your head uh, can um, resist the high acceleration just for a very short time. I mean, we're speaking about 4 to 10 milliseconds. So in this short time, your head uh, inside the helmet needs to be uh, reduced from 7.5 meters per second to zero. And um, it must happen in this short time because the acceleration is quite high. But uh, if we do it in a very long time, you have to have this high acceleration for a long time. But it's also not good. So there must always be um, something in between, not so high, not so wide. So uh, that's why there's these two values we're testing: the maximum acceleration and the HSC. The helmet goes up to three meters twenty-three. <coughs> uh, so this will result in seven and a half meters down here. What is about 27, 28 uh, meters, uh, kilometers per hour? How much? 27, 28. This doesn't sound much, but normally when you fall, you're not driving straight to a wall. Uh, normally you're falling, then sliding a bit, and uh, at last your head bumps to the, uh, to the, <laughs> to the street. And uh, one thing that is also very important, we have a fall what is directly onto an animal. Perpendicular. And this doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a fixed fall, this, and normally you, you hit and then you go away. Yes, yeah. It's not perpendicular, it's mm -hmm. on a certain angle. So the real vertical, let's say perpendicular vector inside your brain is much smaller than here. But okay, that's something we can do later on. Okay. acceleration is 275 and in this case we had 186 so this uh, is nearly 100 g below the maximum value and uh, the area below the curve was uh, 1399 and the maximum value is 2400 so it's uh, 1000 points below the maximum
thing also for, for your readers here the low stage you take another helmet because after crash we have to repeat the helmet you take a new one we take the helmet the same one we don't do we didn't do any trick we take the same helmet which is already crashed and we do a second crash and not on the same spot on another spot with a much more difficult anvil because as you can imagine the curves on anvil the impact is much higher per square millimeter than on a flat one so this should not be done according to the EC, but we do it. And we did even three tests if we want to show that the helmet can, even the law doesn't talk about it, can absorb two, three times the energy. Yeah? I hope it works. Okay, that was it. Very short. And the, um, the curve doesn't look much different, but we see on the values that it's a bit We have 184, 184 G's and only 1,410 HIC. So far, far under the maximum which were set by the law. And I would even dare to do a third test. I'm sure our helmet will do it. Yeah, and inside the helmet you can see now uh, with a flat anvil you normally have these wrinkles here because the EPS is in a very big um, area, was smashed, it's quite soft now. So compressed. after, Yeah, it's uh, very much compressed. Um, but on the outside, I mean, we lost the, the cap here. But I mean, if you ever have an accident, it doesn't matter if you're losing the cap. Uh, but you can't see much on the on the helmet. Um, but when we're doing the test with the uh, curbstone anvil, normally the um, helmet shell is much more destroyed, and you maybe cannot see that much on the EPS. That's why you always have to be careful, even if you can't see much on the outside of the helmet shell. The EPS is uh, yeah smashed, is deformed, and it, sometimes it goes back to its original form, but the cells are destroyed. So that's why you should always replace the helmet after after a crash.